in those childhood where I can develop them and see that they were secure at all times. Two, who gave you those orders? And A, I believe Dr. Berkeley at that time. He said to develop them and see that they were secure. Jim Fox, and I was right there, and the two of us went over to do the developing. Two, did he did Mr. Fox have just some specific responsibilities relative to the White House photographer's office? Is that why he worked with you? A. Jim Fox was the Secret Service photographer. Q. Had you worked closely with him before? A. On occasion we had. Um, Q. Could you describe for us um, your involvement uh, and the transfer of the films over to where they were going to be processed and what role you played in the processing? A. Jim and I got into the White House staff car to go over to the Naval Photographic Center. They were black and white and color. I took the black and white in the one dog room and gave the color. I believe it was Vince Mendona who took the color into the adjoining color dark room so we could process simultaneously so while Jim Fox stood outside to see we were not destroyed. Q, you process the black and white. A, yes. Q, you process it at the Naval Photographic Center or Processing Center. A, Naval Photographic Center. Q, did anyone help you process those? A, no. Q, you were in the room completely by yourself. Yeah, that is why you Q, were you present during the processing of the color film? A, no. Uh, I was in a black and white dark room. Processing the color was in the next room being processed. So it is your regular recollection that Lieutenant Vince Mendona processed the color. A, I believe Vince did. I will not swear it. I do. You believe that uh, A, Vince could have had into one technician had him do it. I do not know. I was in a hurry to get it done. So I went right in the dark room and started processing. Q, to the book, you know, James was there outside and was in the dark, dark room. A, that is right. Q, what happened next with these films? Um, I'm going to start the question. Start again. Q, you process the black and white film holders. Is that correct? A, that is correct. Q, were any of the film holders blank on either or both sides? Um, hey, no black and white. So I have been thinking about it. There could have been an unexposed sheet uh, in the back of my mind, there was something about an unexposed shot, sheet of the color from the empty pouches to unexposed sheet of color from A in the back of my mind. Seems there might have been one, but we accounted for that by bringing the blank sheet with us. So, in other words, we brought a sheet of him for, uh, there are two sheets back for every holder. Here, one of the sheets was it overexposed or underexposed him. The one that was blank, um, if it was blank, I would say well, it probably was not exposed. Um, all the other exposures um, were good exposures. Q is, is a collection that it was blank. A, if there was a missing negative, it was completely unexposed piece of film. Q, that was among the color film holders. A, if that was a possibility, I would not say there was one in the bag of mine. There seems, seems to be one piece of film. That was without image. Q, it is your specific recollection at this time that there were no empty film, black and white film holders there. That is correct. Q, also your recollection that there were no blank images on any of the black and white film holders. A, that is correct. Q, it is also your recollection if there was a blank film in one of the color film holders, you retained it. A, very definitely. We would not destroy anything. Q, what did you do with these materials? A, after they were dry, took them back to the White House and right off here, I don't recall how long it was until a decision was made um, for a seven cents of prints to be made to Q, approximately. How long after the autopsy were these films to back? Was it the morning after, as you said before, a yes? Q, it was also that day. When that when that day did you return? A, developing them, Q, yes. A, developing takes the film drawing and all. 
hour and a half, two hours, I would say, maybe about less than three hours, here was the recollection that you returned them in the morning or the afternoon that day. Hey, I could not tell you because I did not die on night. Uh, from the assassination right on, we worked, worked right on through that nice, the following day and the next night. Hours, I did not tell you, okay, where did you take the divide negatives? Um, hey, the divide negatives front back. Um, we were retained by the Secret Service until we made prints. Uh, Okay, will you return them to the Secret Service? Uh, yes. After we took off them, we took them back to the west wing of the White House to the Secret Service office. Q, uh, did you turn them over, or were you present when they were turned over to some other Secret Service personnel other than James Fox? Hey, uh, Jim Fox and I were together until we got back to the White House. Then the Secret Service, to the best of my recollection, they were in Jim's hands. When we went out of the staff car to go to the Secret Service queue, who did he give them to? A, I did not recall Q. Did he give them to Mr. Park? A, I did not recall it was Q, who was his superior at that time. A, I do not know. Q, under whose orders were you operating when you took the film to be processed and then returned it to... Uh, a, Dr. Berkeley, the one who gave me the film. Q, you had uh, the process black and white and color film that you turned over. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Q, were the operator strike that started in Q? Were, were they black and white negatives, transparencies, or both A, black and white negatives, color negatives? Here there were color negatives with their color transparencies. So, okay, no. Two, at that time, did you read them and draw black and white or color negatives to see what the images were on them? Oh, yeah, I examined them for the first to make sure that we had good negatives. So. In the examination, I did not see the images. I, mean, I did see the images, but did not stay them. Q, did you examine both the black and white and color negatives? Are you right? Q, when was your next contact? Well, the next time you had information about these autopsy negatives. Um, and the next time was when they needed seven sets of prints. Q, when was that? Um, a, I do not recall the exact time. Q, approximately when was that? Um, a, it seems to me that it would have been a day later. That four days is a complete jumble in my mind. I cannot remember C-37. Q, the four days before the assassination and the funeral. A, yes, Q, is it possible that you had the prince made several years later? A, oh, no. Q, it is your recollection that it's within a few days. A, yes, very definitely. Q, could you tell us the chain of events? that led uh, to the printing of the negatives, um, the printing of the photographic prints. Uh, a, I was told that they needed seven sets of eight by ten prints. Q, who told you that? Uh, a, to my recollection, Ted Shepard, Berkeley, and the Secret Service men were all present. I do not recall which one told me the exact words. Um, they apparently had been discussing what was required, and I was called in and told, here is what they need, and went back to the photographics that are made seven sets and brought them back to the White House. Uh, I have not seen the prints since. Uh, Q, was there a particular individual whose orders you were responding to? A, I do not recall. Um, Q, do you recall if Dr. Berkeley asked that you make the prints? Uh, a, as I say to the best of my knowledge, Ted Shepard, who was a naval aide, Berkeley, a secret service man, I do not recall who it was, the three of them were there. 
to the Secret Serviceman Jim Fox. Uh, a no, Jim did not have authority for something of that nature. He was the president at the time. A to the best of my recollection, he went back over to the photographic center with us while the prints were being made to ensure security too. Do you recall that he was there when you were told that you had to have the prints made? A no I do not. I assume he was because I took them immediately back to the photographic center to be printed. But I will not swear. Q, do you know whether Ted Shepherd is still living? A yes he is. He was naval aide to the president. He's now retired from the Navy. I saw him about a year ago. Q, do you know if he lives in this area generally? A, I saw him in a local hotel at a reception. You could run him down. He is married um, to Senator Schweiker's daughter. I read that Senator Sparkman's daughter. Here you were told to make these seven sets of prints. Um, and you stated that James Fox went with you. Is that correct? A, to the best of my knowledge, yes. Q, you went to the Naval Processing Center, a Naval Photographic Center. Q, who actually made the prints? Uh, a, well, it is basically a mechanical operation. You put them in these trays and you just move, the machine just moves them from side to side. Um, them, it, they are machine processed. Um, who, who supervised the machine? A. Oh, Vince Mendonio was there. I was there. I am sure Jim Fox was there with us. Uh, who, do you remember some assistance? A. There would be another technician. Um, I am trying to think about that time. I think a fellow by the name of Nolan was our number one technician over there. I will not swear that I can't. Do you remember there being some women technicians? Hey, we had Sandy Spencer. Do you, do you remember any upsetting developments? Um, are significant occurrences besides just the processing of the prints that happened that day while the prints were being processed. Uh, hey, no. Q, do you remember anyone reacting very strongly upon seeing the prints? Uh, hey, well, it was a rather traumatic time for all of us. Um, right off the top of my head, I do not recall any really outstanding event. Uh, Sandy was the type of girl that she could be upset over something like this. They definitely were not the type of pictures that a person would look joy looking at. Okay, she worked at the Naval Photographic Center. A, yes, she was on detail from the White House. Okay, do you remember a woman passing out upon seeing the prince? A, no. You did all the people who were present there with you examine the prints? Uh, or did just some of them examine the prints? Uh, a, examining the prints. Uh, they were examined for quality but not for detail. In other words, as a photographer, I can take and make a print uh, and examine it, make sure it is good quality. And ten minutes later, even asking what it was, I cannot even tell you who was in the picture. You are not looking for that sort of thing. You are looking for the quality to make sure the print is technically correct. It was examined for technical purposes, but not for subject matter. Kelly, okay, did you give the person now present there any special instructions about not talking about what they had done? A, we were all told not to discuss the matter. Kelly, okay, who told you that? Um, a, I was told by Dr. Berkeley, I was told by the Secret Service, Jazz Shepard emphasized to make sure everybody knows that they are not supposed to discuss any subject matter in these pictures. Can so you pass that word on in a Naval Photographic Center? A, Vince Madonia passed it on to anybody who was involved with the trays and like that. 
we had a few personnel as possible in the area. The area was cleared and so that only those necessary to be there would see them. So after the prints were made, then what happened? A, I took them back to the White House. Q, you and A, Jim Fox, he was with me. We took them back. They were again, to the best of my recollection, we took them right into the Secret Service office. I have never seen them since. Q, what happened when you took them into the Secret Service office? So, A, I gave them to whoever was the senior agent in the office. Q, did you do anything with the prints before you turned them over? A, we were told to make seven cents. So, so we laid out seven to make sure there were seven prints of each. Q, um, did you put them in folders or envelopes or anything like that? A, I believe that we put each side in a separate envelope, but we may have just flip-flopped it. But to my recollection, we put them in separate envelopes. Q, what did you consider us that to? A, one print of each view. Q, of each view of the black and white in color? A, no, we printed only the color. Q, you printed only seven sets of the color. A, yes. Q, how many sets of the black and white did you print? A, I do not recall printing any to the best of my knowledge. The black and white were just a backup in case there was something wrong with the color. We had a backup of the black and white, too. Q, did you know why there were seven sets made? Was there some special significance to that? A, I was told seven. I was told to make seven. Q, did you put each set into an envelope? A, as I say, to the best of my recollection, we did. Put them by sets in the envelope. We may have just put them face to face, back to back, on the seven sets. It has been too long. Q, did you label the envelope? Say no. Um, Q, you stated to me previously in the film that you had a pretty good idea of where some of the sets of prints were going. A, I was later told where some of the sets were going. Q, who told you that? A, I do not recall. Q, you stated to me previously over the phone that you believed that you had, in fact, put them in envelopes. Do you think your memory is not certain on that? A, it has been 15 years and I've handled hundreds of thousands of pictures since. And I am not. And under us, I will not say they were never up. They may have gone face to face, back to back. Here you also said on the phone that you believed that you have labeled the envelopes with some destination or certain individuals' names. Do you remember doing that, A, there again? Under Rose, I am not certain. I am not going to say that something happened. That is the foggy period 15 years ago. Q, you need not overstate the degree of certainty that you hold the recollection you have. You can just tell us that you think it was a certain way. A, it seems to me that we put the separate sets in envelopes. But there again, I want to stress, I will not swear to it. Q, is it your best recollection now that you labeled the envelopes? I personally did not label them Q. Were you present when they were labeled? A, it seems to me that at the time, there were seven sets. It was either stated or written down that this one goes to archives, this one goes to the Attorney General, and we started through like that. Q, what other destinations do you recall? A, I am not certain this happened that day, or... If I heard at a later date uh, that they have been sent to them, I do not know. Q, what other destinations do you recall for the sets of the prints? Uh, either at that time I was later informed uh, that Senator Ted Kennedy had a set. Uh, Q, do you remember a set being labeled for the Secret Service or FBI or any other government agencies? A, I am sure that one was kept for the Secret Service. There is a little friction between the Secret Service and the FBI, and at that time it was coming out on the investigation and all of that. And I do not recall the FBI being given any. I was told that the Warren Commission was offered a set and that they refused it to. 
to tell children that the prince was going to some of these various destinations. Hey, as I say, I do not recall to who might have told you. Hey, it could have been the Secret Service personnel of the upper echelon. It could have been Dr. Berkeley. I am not certain. Hey, who could have been in the Secret Service who might have told you where the prince was going? Hey, it could have been Roy Kellerman who had taken over handling everything at that point. Uh, it could have been uh, anyone uh, of the upper echelon of Secret Service. Uh, I talk with them every day. Q, anyone else that you would frequent contact with that you can remember the name? Hey, no, I am sure it would have been held within the Secret Service. Dr. Brooklyn, you are the naval aide. I do not believe that it would have gone beyond there. Do you have, how could it have been Robert Bell? Hey, you could have. Uh, he was of the echelon. Hugh, let me ask you this. How would you characterize your receiving the information that the prince were distributed to some other sources? Would you say that was a rumor? Do you believe you were told it by someone who knew? Hey, I am certain. There were so many rumors at that time. I just discounted rumors completely. Too many things going on when a rumor comes. If you did not have a backing. Hugh, how would you characterize this information? Hey, I do not think it would have stuck with me if it had been, if it did not come from a reliable source Q. In other words, it came from someone who knew, but thought he or she knew that the information was true. A, either knew or had good, very good reason to believe that it was true. Q, when you brought the prince back to the White House, um, was Dr. Berkeley present uh, at that time or at any time before you last uh, saw them? Hey, Berkeley, to my knowledge, was not present when we brought the prince back. Uh, you, you stayed really at the Naval Photographic Center. You had checked the prince for quality, but not for detail. Is that true? Hey, yes. You, did you have a chance uh, subsequent to that examination to look a little more closely at the prince? Hey, I never saw the prince after we brought them back. Uh, Q, did you have a chance at any time to examine the prints closely enough that you now have a recollection of what they showed? Hey, oh, yes. Q, when did you examine them that closely? Hey, at the time that I was examining for technical quality. A lot of things were apparent. Q, what things stick in your mind about those prints? What do you recall seeing? Hey, well, uh, it was a close-up of a cavity in the hand. Uh, probes through the body. Q, where did the probes go through the body? A, from the point where the projectile entered to the point that the projectile left. Q, where were those two points in? A, I did not say there were two points in. Q, you said the projectile. A, from the entry to the exit. Q, where was the entry and the exit point? Q, operator A, here again. I have a mental problem here that we were sworn not to disclose this to anybody. Being under oath, I cannot tell you I do not know because I do know. But at the same time, I do feel I have been sworn not to disclose this information. And I would prefer very much um, that you get one of the sets of prints and view them. I am not trying to be hard to get along with. Uh, I was told not to disclose that area of the body. And I am at a loss right now as to whether, which is right. Q, was it a naval order that you're operating under that you would not disclose? A, this was Secret Service. So, to the best of my knowledge, Dr. Berkeley also emphasized uh, that this not be discussed. Q, do you remember seeing rulers in the photographs? Or anything other than the body itself? Hey, yes. Q, what other things besides the body did you see other than the rulers? Hey, 
What appear to be stainless steel probes Q that have been with AA. The probes Q, yes. A, I would estimate um, about two foot two. Q was there. One probe that you saw through the body, or were there more than one? A, more than one. Here again, we are getting into this gray area of what I was instructed not to discuss. Here, I'm sure you recognize that this is the duly authorized congressional investigation. Hey, right, I do. That's why I say this is where I have a problem. I realize this is a duly authorized investigation of the United States government. Personally, my preference would be that you get a set of the prints and view the prints. And then there would be no question that would get me off the hook on the fact that I am sworn not to discuss the subject matter. Q, do you know Robert Glass, the General Counsel of the Secret Service? A, I do not know him personally. Q, if you were authorized to, to discuss this information, would you be willing to discuss it, Jim? I should point out that we have the full cooperation of the Secret Service and the other government agencies in obtaining all information. And there were other orders that came down that pertain to this material and the autopsy that have been firmly been rescinded by government agencies so we could pursue this investigation. I am sympathetic to your concerns. I'm not sure that you recognize the evidentiary significance of what you are saying here today and the importance of what you are not saying relative to other people's testimony, relative to examinations of the prints that we have made. A, I think this would clarify the whole situation if the prints were examined, and then I would not uh, in the spot that I am, but I am so not to disclose it. It would give a very definite answer to you as to the number of probes uh, Hugh, I should say that we have had access to the autopsy photographs, and the questions that I'm asking remain unanswered. So I would like to ask again, if either we could arrange or you could arrange with the Secret Service to have this order lifted, if you then would be willing to cooperate with us. So, hey, I will cooperate as far as I can. As I say, Hugh, if you are willing, we could take a short break and we could call the Secret Service. So, or I could give you the number and you can call them. Or we can just ask a few other questions uh, if you gain a clearance and then reconvene uh, another day if that is convenient with you. Hey, whatever, whichever you prefer. Pretty, I think we'll take a recess at this time. I pray this recess. Here we are resuming the deposition. During the break, I spoke with uh, John Meenan, an assistant to Robert Glass, and he's going to contact Robert Glass, General Counsel of the Secret Service, for the record, the time now is 10.28 a.m. Mr. Knudsen, was this a totally unique situation specifically? The making of these prints and the number of sets that were made, or was this kind of a standard proceeding? Standard procedure for a sensitive photograph? A, I do not understand the question. T, were there other very sensitive photographs that you had to deal with that maybe were handled in a similar way as these? with the secret service being involved in the transport of them. With a certain set number of prints made up, a definite number of sets of prints made up, with this customary precision for sensitive materials. Hey, I do never go any other time secret service has ever escorted me for something like that. Uh, two was the number seven, a customary number of four sets of prints. Hey, no, I cannot tell you why it sticks uh, it sticks in my mind very strongly, Q. Could have been seven prints. Are you 
the ratio is seven sets of prints A, I know it would not have been seven prints because uh, that would not have covered a print for each negative. Two, how many negatives were you? How many prints were made? A, I do not recall. Q, could you give me a rough idea? For example, were there a similar number of color and black in my prints? Or was there a greater number of one than the other? A, no black and white prints made to my knowledge. Q, were there a similar um, number of black and white negatives as compared to color negatives? A, it seems to me... Approximately 10 negatives, color negatives. I do not recall. This is an approximate. Do you think there are approximately 10 color prints made? A, no, approximately 10 color negatives. And seven prints of each of these. Do you made seven uh, prints uh, of each negative? A, uh, yes. Uh, Q, so that each side consisted of ten color prints, A, uh, approximately. I do not recall the exact number there again, but I'm taking this from what they said to me. There were five others that they took into the dark room. If, was, if there were five others, ten negatives, if there were one on a spell sheet, there would have been nine negatives. Okay, were well, there approximately ten black and white negatives or a greater or lesser number? A, there was one. Total film back. There would have been twelve negatives black and white. Q, did you make an index of the prints uh, describing each one? A, no. Who was one made to your knowledge? A, not to my knowledge. Q, you worked in the White House until 1974, possibly a separate day, but Q, what did you do then? A, photographer, Q, private. A, I was employed by the United States government. On June 1965, I had my 20 years in the Navy and I requested retirement. I was advised that I could retire provided I would stay on in the civil service capacity. They wanted my services to continue. Um, so I retired. Uh, I can tell you the exact date, just a minute, uh, Brother Post. I retired on the 11th of June, 1955, which was a Friday. I worked Saturday and Sunday and went on civil service paper on Monday. On the 14th of June, I went on the civil service payroll. Q, could you describe for us what you are reading that information from a Navy retirement, my Navy retirement card, and they put the date of retirement on there, so I know that was the date that I retired. And I know it was a Friday. They had the fine arts. Um, a celebration show or whatever you call it at the White House. I went that weekend photographing that. Uh, and I was advised that I did not go on payroll until Monday morning. Q, have you been working for civil service ever since A until I retired in November 74? Have you been doing since then? A since then. Freelance photography. Q, you still have been working even though you've been retired from the government. A, right? Uh, Q, are you working for a time? A, no. Uh, just part-time freelance. Do you have you any con have you had any contact or did you have any contact with any other autopsy related materials while you were working at the White House during those years? A not to my knowledge. Q did you ever have knowledge of um, or were you ever told about autopsy x rays, for example? A no, I do not know they that any were ever taken. Q, did you know from your personal knowledge or were you told about the existence of any tissue-related materials from the autopsy itself, such as uh, tissue sections or paraffin blocks? A, I was told I do not know who it was that there was tissue taken from the back of the head. As I say, I was told I do not know. Q, uh, did you also learn where that material 
as being kept when you learned about its existence. Hey, I was told it was taken at the time of the autopsy at the Naval Hospital in Bethesda. I would just assume but it was studied out there because I understand they have a fine set up there as any place it would be assumption I do not know to detail whether them into possession of any information about where those tissue materials were kept or what happened to them hey no pretty we will take another short break and see if we can hear from the secret service it is now 10.35 a.m. and I pray there is a result Two, we will go back on the record now. The time now is 11.12 a.m. We still have been unable to get the call back from Robert Cross from the Secret Service. So, Mr. Knudsen, I did, as I said, talk with um, John Meenan, who works for Robert Cross. Uh, he is trying to get in touch with him, but we, you were in the Navy at the time. I believe is that correct, right that is correct. Um, Q, I will show you with this time the letter that we sent to the Secretary of Defense uh, asking that the order so that was given to Navy personnel be lifted and the uh, response. Um, and I give you my assurance uh, that um, the Secret Service is cooperating with us. Um, and it is only a question of the communication getting through. Specifically, the I request that the order is on be lifted and that it pertain to people present at the autopsy. Uh, as the present, I show you this letter. It is dated February 27, 1978, to Harold Brown, Secretary of Defense. Um, and just take your time and read that. I put it up on. Hugh, if you still have a problem going into the details of your recollection, we can convene at another time to question you. Uh, a, I probably would recall as good now as I could later. Like I say, it has been a long time. Uh, to, um, we have gone over quite a few of your recollections. And we are going to show you in a second um, the color of Tassie prints uh, that we have uh, and ask you whether the prints that you are showing are consistent with uh, your recollections of them when you saw them. The primary points that we are going to cover are the number and location of wounds and and the other details in the photographs that you described generally, such as the presence of metal probes in the photographs, the presence of rulers in the photographs, and what have you. Are you confident now that you saw metal probes in the photograph? A yes. Q, are you confident that the metal probes were actually through the wounds when you saw them a yes I am certain of that uh, because it shows a point of entry and exit with the probe do you rather have photographs that you have seen either before this incident or since that incident that you might be confusing with your recollection of these photographs a to my knowledge you have not seen anything regarding I have never seen any photographs of it other than the ones taken there. Q, have you seen photographs of any other autopsy? Say no. Q, have you seen photographs of any other dead bodies that may have probes in them? A, yes, I have. Um, I am certain on the Kennedy there were the probes showing the point of entry and exit. Um, Q, how many probes were there that you saw in a given picture? What is the most probes that you saw in a given picture at one time? A, I know there were two. Q, two metal probes that were through once when you saw them. A, yes. Pretty, we will take a break. It is 11.20 up very recent. Q, we will resume. The time is now 11.28.
And if you can use them in a if you're supposed to drive glass on the phone, yeah. Um, and if you can use them if you just want to briefly stay to uh, what Mr. Glass said to you about whether you could talk to us. A, well, Mr. Glass said that under the circumstances, um, that it being a legitimate government subcommittee that he felt uh, that it would be appropriate uh, to cooperate to the fullest. Uh, he did not uh, have any objection to my talking. The main thing that they felt was continued silence towards uh, any assassination buffs, uh, reporters, or this sort of thing. But insofar as any committee they had no objection and thought that I should cooperate, he would thank you as I said previously, Mr. Glass is the General Counsel of the United States Secret Service. Now, before the break, we were talking about um, the number of probes, and you had said the most you saw in A152 was two. I believe you stated, is that correct? A, I said the minimum was two. Q, what was the most? A, um, over this period of time, I'm not certain. It seems to me that there were three men picture, but this I will not uh, state uh, for sure. With a neck and out the back of the neck. A, A, the point is, entry XIQ, the manner of pose extended from the front of the neck to the back of the neck. A, right, one was through the chest cavity. Chest cavity. You can do about it. Involve some of the state interpretations of the small firm's state tax liability after having taken the jobs tax credit. We've included at the end a rather lengthy letter explaining in detail what is occurring in the states of New York and Mississippi. We don't know how widespread it is, but we know that it uh, is occurring there and probably some other states. We do not support the targeted uh, program. And the reason we don't is because we don't think it fits the small business community. In terms of this rapid rate of real growth that we've had in the last four years, hold the spending trend constant in terms of real dollars, adjust for inflation, that we wouldn't get large deficits. In fact, the largest would be $50 billion, as we show here in the first year. And by the fourth year, because of the feedback effect of revenues and the feedback we're forecasting here. The neck and out the back of the neck. A, A the point of entry exit Q, the mineral pose extended from the front of the neck to the back of the neck. A, right, one was through the chest cavity. Chest cavity. You can do about it. Involve some of the state interpretations of the small firm's state tax liability after having taken the jobs tax credit. We've included at the end, a rather lengthy letter explaining in detail what is occurring in the states of New York and Mississippi. We don't know how widespread it is, but we know that uh, it is occurring there and probably some other states. We do not support the Ask uh, the person making that accusation, well, what are you assuming about spending? We're assuming that we switch our focus to the tax side, put the brakes on spending growth, and I think that it can be done without any inflationary, additional inflation, or other uh, economic uh, effects. But when you put it in business, it is the group in the higher city, about the other man. Anything else? Just going to Congressman from California, an extraordinary system elected received a letter from an IRS constituent which said that Charlie Green, the attorney, was promised to have the Sierra Madre Mountains refined. Much more complex than an office for one month, and they haven't done so. It did it go out of the way for the years. It seems to me that the entry point was a little bit lower in the back. Well, the point in the back was a little bit lower than the point in the front, put it that way. So the pearl was kind of, I had me from top 
you die in front of you die again. You will ultimately be guarding both brains and how high you imagine the run was on the front of the neck. They stand up between points on the front of the neck and the back of the neck. And how high on the back of the neck and how high or low on the front of the neck would you say for that work? Hey, as I said, not starting them for technical purposes. And it seems to me that the point on the front end. Both the path is point center in this area here, indicating how could you articulate them? Hey, what kind is this then? Here you are pointing to a point right around the top end. Hey, right about where the necktie, that would be a center in that vicinity. Hey, look, ask me how much lower than that was the other book, which is like, that went to the chest cavity. Hey, I would put it, um, six, seven inches. Hey, was the chest open or closed in the photograph? Hey, it was a side view. I did not study it, I just glanced at it to make sure. Q, from the side view, you saw both folks say right down. Q, where would you play yourself find separate groups in the back? Uh, you said one was in the neck, one was in the back. If ask me how high up uh, or how low uh, A, I would put in the back of what seemed to me is probably around uh, 10 inches. There again, I do not recall the length of time. I cannot say. Here you were kind of pointing to the middle of your back, about midway down. You would say a hey, midway between the neck and the waist. Here, where was the other probe? Hey, this one. Here you just indicated where the probe came out. Uh, and the lower a, the, somewhere around the middle of the back, it that seemed to be was right around mid chest. Here the probe that you said you could see coming out of the neck. Uh, from the front of the neck, where was it? Out of the back of the neck, how high? How could you say that one was? A, about the base of the neck, here the base of the neck. Uh, was the body lying flat? Or sitting up or lying on its front when you saw the probe through it? Uh, a, it would have to be erected to put the probe through because on the back there is no way. Hey, could you make out the faces of the people who were holding him? Are the faces of the people in the background? Hey, to my nose, there were no faces. Uh, hey, could you see their hands? Hey, there again, I did not study them. Hey, uh, was there in any of the photographs? So a photograph showing a metal probe to the head? Hey, no. Now, to my knowledge, um, to my knowledge, the only photograph of the head was to show the wound uh, in the right rear of the head there, a little right of center. To you, I am going to show you the color autopsy prints. Uh, they are numbered beginning with 26. Uh, F, uh, if you want to make a comment on a particular print, uh, just let me know. Not that we check the number of it, but we'll be able to refer to it in the record. Uh, not the record showing, handing the witness. Uh, JFK autopsy photo book number six, part one, open to the color prints. Uh, these are photographs of the autopsy prints. Uh, these are not the actual prints. A, I was going to say these are not the original prints. I can see that way off the color is off. Uh, did you want me to go through them? Q, you can list through them and make comments what you feel. That it is necessary. If you see photographs that you recognize, you might say that you recognize it. Uh, hey, I recall uh, roughly, though again, I did not study them in detail. I just fan through the negatives. She the witness has looked through photographs 26 to 29 so far. Hey, these are roughly what I recall seeing. And here is the ruler that I recall in one. She was the witness is referred to her in Dakota photograph 38F. Hey, I recall seeing one. She was photographed at the back of the president. Hey, there again, I will not say it was this one. 
Christ is out there are out there every cloud in the back of my mind there about the ruler and some of the photographs to let the record show that that some of these are not the footprints of the same one. To let me ask you Hey, I did not see this Q, the witness is referring to the kind of photographs of the brain. He said he had not seen them, but let me ask you about photograph number 44 and so. Was this the photograph you made reference to earlier when you talked about the photograph of the head opened up or the skull opened up? Hey, it seems to me that there was one photograph that showed up. I can best describe it to you. This part of the hair indicating there seems that there's a strand of skin holding this this way too. The witness is pointing to the back portion of the head. I am turning to photograph 42 and 43 as hey, this is not what I mean. Here are photographs of the back of the president's hand. Let me just ask you if that looks like one that you saw. Well, that matches your recollection. This is the back of the president's head here. Hey, there again, I did not say it in detail. It seemed to me that there was a little more of uh, that piece of the skull hanging in one of the photographs. Uh, here, this is it. Q, now we are referring to photograph number 37F, uh, showing the top of the president's head. Uh, so it is your testimony here today that these photographs are not inconsistent with the ones that you saw. They no, know, not at all. Q, uh, is there anything that you saw that are not represented by these photographs? Hey, um, I feel certain that there was a one with the two probes. Q, one photograph with two probes through the body. Hey, that is correct, too. Q, I am referring again to photograph number. 37 in the area that is on the right side of the photograph from your position, which is to the front of the president's body. There are some metal things vaguely in view, one which points towards the president. Hey, that is uh, not it. Uh, that is not what I had in mind. Uh, Q, could you once again now go through the photographs, looking carefully to see if there is anything in there that you might have taken to be a metal probe which was not uh, on this examination? A greater class, Q, what the witness. Okay, let the record show that the witness is beginning again at 26 so a greater class. Hey, I do not see a photograph here that covers the chest area. Q, it was yourself that it was from the side though. Hey, I saw it you. Q, referring to photograph number 40F showing the front of the president, including the front neck region. Do you see a point on the president which would correspond to one or more of the locations of the probe you recall? A right here indicating. Q, could you articulate it? A right here at the neck, where the necktie would be tied. Q, let the record show that the witness is pointing to the trick. Tricky enemy incision at the front of the president's neck. Is it your recollection also that there was a metal probe that was on that area that right there? That is correct. Uh, you looking at this photograph, I passed me how much further. Was it at a point that would not be visible in this photograph? Uh, a, um, I am beginning to run it now. I do not see anything here. But it's in the back of my mind. There was the probe through the body. Two, is it your present recognition that the body was not opened up in the chest area, or could you not tell whether it was opened up or was it definitely not opened in the picture that you would call the two nuns here? Hey, there again, I was looking quickly for quality. I did not study it, uh, but I did not recall seeing any photograph of the chest being opened. Um, do you think it is something you would remember the president's chest was cut and opened up? Yes, sir. Hey, was it, does this roughly correspond to the number of occupants you recall? 
Hey, that is correct. And he was just such a recollection that there was one more, or at least one more that is present in these. And hey, it seems to me that the run I saw with the probes um, was strictly a negative. I do not recall seeing a print of it. Um, the first day when we processed the film, we were just checking the negatives. Um, I believe it was a black and white. Um, I do not know. I believe it was a negative of the probe. Um, you, uh, you think it was black and white? Or you think it might have been? Or you are just not sure? A, it was a negative. I do not recall ever having seen the print. Um, it seems to me that there was a negative. Uh, in checking the negative Q, let you, me show you from the same photo book at the beginning. Photographs of the black and white prints. Do you see if perhaps one of these may correspond to your recollection of the black and white negative that you just referred to? Beginning at photograph number one F. Let the record show that the witness is looking through the photographs sequentially. Operator pause. A. If this in the copy Q, let the witness record show that the witness is referring to 13 F. It looks like it being allowed across a lower version of the photograph. A. And looking at the negative. You have a down here. It's been so John Gunn. Uh, if if that is in the original Q, I do not think it is in the original because it looks like it is on some of these other copies. Hey, I see it over here now. I do not see it. Q, uh, you, you are saying you do not see it? A, I do not see it here, but in the back of my mind, it still seems that there was one photograph. That body erect with two probes through it. You let me ask you a one negative. You know, what is your recollection? There was just one film pack of black and white film. A, yes, Q, you say there are 12 exposures, A, 12 exposures. Q, there definitely was not another pack. Um, a, I will not swear to that. I do not honestly remember. Q, you personally did all the black and white film, A, but Q, no one else was in the room when you did it, A, that is right. Um, Q, it is James Fox's recollection that he did the black and white developing as a secret service on um, them. That is inconsistent with your recollection. A, he may have printed black and white that his land. Uh, the black and white were developed at the photographic center at the same time that the color was. Uh, Q, you personally have a specific recollection of having developed the black and white negatives. And a, right, Jim stood outside the dark room door. Q, it is also Mr. Fox's recollection that some of the black and white sides of the film holders either had no film in them or they were not exposed to. A, the black and white was film pack, the film holders were color. To the best of my knowledge, there were no black and whites in the holders. I know there was a tag in them. Hugh, it is also your recollection that uh, all of the new soldiers came out that, well, of the black and white is like a day, but Hugh, you said maybe one of the colors either was unexposed or overexposed. Hey, it could not have been overexposed, there was no exposure. I do not recall for sure on this, but Hugh, uh, if there was one that like day, there is there's something shaky about the, the third piece of film we took with us. Q, if there was one, it was called now black and white. A, correct. Q, were you ever asked for a statement by any government body about the work that you did pertaining to the negatives or autopsy prints? A, no. Q, could you articulate that again? A, no. Q, do you recall? Um, that the orders to have the prints made out um, came to you from Thompson. A, no, I do not. At this point, I do not recall. Uh, who gave that specific order? Q, it is your sense. 
that it was in a meeting with Hannah Shepard, Admiral Berkeley, and possibly Jim Faxton, President of the correct? And yet it's my recollection that the Prince of Dr. Berkeley the secret service and I do not recall the A who the agent was. Possibly thanks and possibly to a shepherd. Two, Mr. Fox has indicated that Dr. Brooke told him to have the prints made up and that he went to Mr. Buck of the secret service for his okay. Does that refresh your recollection? A, hey, it could have been Berkeley. I know Berkeley was definitely there when the prints uh, it seems to me that Berkeley was the one who stated that the prints were to be made. And, and like I say, uh, I do not recall uh, who was there other than I know that Berkeley was. It seems to me that Fox was. Uh, and it could have been other agents. And it could have been Tara Shepard. Here, you think Tess Shepard was aware of what was going on? A, as major agent present in the field, and he was aware of it. Do do you have any personal knowledge about when and where the black and white prints were made? A, no. Do do you know that they were not made at the Naval Photographic Center? A, I do not know that for a fact. I assume that the black and white prints were made. By Jim Banks, he had black and white capabilities within the Secret Service. Um, the reason we got involved was the color capability which he did not have. Um, was there anything else um, that you can add for us about the details of these incidents or anything that you want to put in perspective or elaborate on at this time? I know. Like I say, it has been 15 years, uh, and a lot of this is foggy, I do know. Uh, but the best sequence of events that I can recall has was the morning following the autopsy. Berkeley handed me a, pa a paperback with a black and white car film. And uh, there was an agent, I do not recall who it was, and Jim Fox was there. And he said, take this over to the photo photographic center process and bring the negatives back. Don't let anybody see it. I said, somebody's going to have to, in the color processing of it, don't let anybody see it who doesn't have to and don't discuss it with anybody. Two, is there anyone else that you know of that may have seen the negatives that you are talking about that showed the birds? Anyone else that you might suggest that we might talk to about that? Hey, no. Um, it's just in the back of my mind. I am certain that there is a one shot of the body or what? Do you perhaps see it? Um, I don't mind. Yeah, and, um, I I processed the black and white. I hung it up. I just quickly went down it to make sure that I had everything there. So I then closed the door. Jim and I stayed outside, had a cup of coffee or something, while the film was driving, drying after it was dried. Put each negative in a four by five preserver. Took it, took the color which had also dried uh, the same. You did Jim Fox look at those black and white negatives. Uh, to your knowledge, A, not in my presence. Q, you were present when you and he turned them over. A, we went back to, it seems to me, was W16, I'm not certain. We did go into W16, wherever it was, we went with the negatives. We turned them all back. Q, the only reason you would have a feeling that he had reviewed them was the fact that you assumed that he made black and white prints. A, I assume that you is the one who made the prints. Q, did Sandy Spencer or anyone else at Naval Photographic Center have an occasion look at you at the black and white negative to your knowledge? No, Sandy was basically color. As I say, I went into the dark room, crossed dust it, went out the door, stayed outside the door. When it was dry, I went back and checked them. They were dry. And we departed. Q, have you had any discussion with any of the other people that you talked about today about what you saw? 
Any hidden photographs in? No, yes, no, but never. I never discussed anything in these photographs until today, in detail. Hey, have you had any previous experience in mental probes such as this then? So that you would know what it would look like in a negative? Hey, the only reason I say it, I was a mental probe, then. In my recollection, it was around 24 inches long, probably 3 eighths of an inch diameter. It appeared to be aluminum stainless steel. There again, it was a negative this size hanging up like this to dry. Here you use a lot of experience of okay, negatives of the years, A over 30 years. Q could it have been some form of light shadow or a defect in the negative that you may have felt was a mental probe? What do you think it was actually an object? Thought there was a picture taken. A I felt that there had to be something in the negative. But I do not believe could have been a defect of Q. It did not look like an artifact of any kind. A, it did not appear to that, that way to me. Like I say, I did not take it down and study it over a view or anything like that. I just glanced at it. The wall is approximately this color, and the negatives were hanging like this, indicating. I just flipped them around like this, indicating. He let the weather show that the witness held up some papers from the top, as though it were a negative hanging from the line and just turns them and glance. That there were either metal probes or that were extended to look through the body or that such probes were photographed through the body. So obviously it would be significant if your recollection were correct, uh, and it would be of evidentiary significance to us. Uh, I in no way mean to question your view of your recollection. I just want you to have it in historical perspective as to what some others say, and you may be absolutely, completely correct. Uh, Hey, I do not know why that one sticks in my mind, a right profile of the body. It would seem to me that if it were, as I am sure that it was, that there would have been something in the autopsy report as to the probes. And I can't conceive in my mind how I would feel that this negative did have it. Like I said a couple of times, I did not study these things over a viewing glass like this, uh, indicating, as you say, was a suspended from a close pin on a wire, a hook on a wire. And I was just flipping them this way. I did not see any picture there that would confused with a picture, at least a picture. Q, if you should call anything else, whether it is new things or elaboration, or your opinions on anything change, or someone should, and someone's name should come to mind, you might be able to also provide information. I hope you will feel free to contact us. A, you have talked to Jim Pass. Q, yes. A, and he did not recall any black and white negatives of that nature. Q, I am not permitted to give out the substance of the investigation, but I think you can glean certain things from the nature of my questions. A, Jim is the one who apparently printed the black and white. I know the black and white did not go into the photo center for printing. So I was in that Jim didn't, Jim. Why? This sticks in mind that there was one with these two groups to the body. That nobody else, because I put this question in my mind. And yet, um, But I could not imagine where I would get the idea from if I had not seen it. And yet it is starting to bother me now. Well, that there is nothing in the autopsy about it. Certainly that would be in the autopsy if it were true. At this point, I wish I had studied the negatives. 
rather than glance and Cuba. I believe, I believe it is continuing. At this point, I am confused why it sticks, it sticks in my mind so strongly that there was this photograph yet uh, nobody else uh, recalls it. And it is apparently not in any report. Uh, if it is not in any report, uh, I cannot conceive why it would not be in the report if it were there. It is really bothering me as to why it does stick in my mind so much. Q, if you, as I said, if you, you know, desire to talk about it or if you've thought about it for somewhere or whatever, please feel free to give us a call and we'll be glad to talk about it. And we appreciate very much your taking the time and coming in because it seems it took a lot longer than we thought it would. Hey, that is okay. I'm trying to wrap my mind uh, and uh, this should stick in my mind so strongly that there was this photograph uh, and yet no other signs of it. Um, it bothers me. I cannot think of any reason why it would stick in my mind if I hadn't seen it. Uh, Hugh, this concludes the deposition. It is now 12 of us. I pray it wasn't that. The future of it. And that would give you the lower interest rate than what would be normal. And that obvious difference would add to the amount of money that could be used to retire the bonds and also pay the annual dividends. So that don't normally would come from the sale of bonds. Curtis, if you had a bank that was involved in this and loaned the money directly to the chief that would probably happen is the GSAP, but let's say it was tied to a specific budget they wanted by a corporation. There would be an agreement reached among all three parties in order to repay this loan by a corporation. So the stock of the corporation would be acquired and would make enough con contributions to the GSAC issue, which would be tax deductible, and they could repay the loan. Good example was what we had just money in the South Indiana Lab Company.